shoot your shot and let's add a custom bow to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, Professor Becker, tell everyone more in this tutorial. We're going to be adding a custom bow to our Minecraft mod over here. And this is going to be pretty interesting indeed. Overall, a custom bow is actually more straightforward than you might think. However, we're going to be using the model predicates that we've used last time. And that is, of course, quite important. And there's actually one very, very weird thing that we'll also need. But we'll see that in a second. First things first, let's add the custom bow to our mod items class. So this is going to be a public static final item. This is going to be the Kaum underscore bow equal to the register item method over here. It's going to be the Kaum bow in this case which is going to be a new bow item, right? That's quite interesting. It's going to have new item settings. And the only thing we really need to want to do here is the max damage. Let's do it like 500 or something. That's going to be fine. And that is actually the count bow registered fairly straightforwardly. Let's add it to the item group over here because that's usually a thing that I... like. I can't forget this from time to time, which is, of course, not something we want. That's pretty good over here. And with that done, we can jump to the model predicates because here what we want is we want to add the bow. To do this, we're going to make a private method. So there's going to be a private static void register custom bow with an item over here called item. And then the question is, how do we register the bow or rather, how do we register what we need here in this case? And what we're going to do is we're simply going to go into the model predicate provider registry. And I believe that we should have the model predicate provider over here accessible so we can control left click on this. And inside of here, we can simply move down and we can see here is the bow. Here is the bow again. So we wanted to take both of these, right? So we're just going to select over all of it. We're going to get the register call of the brush as well, but that's going to be fine. We're going to get all of this. Control C to copy it and then Control V to paste it in here. These errors are totally fine because we can literally just change them by saying model predicate provider registry dot register. And all of a sudden that error goes away. Same thing here. Model predicate provider registry dot register and the middle one with the brush we delete and all of a sudden no errors are present anymore. All of the code as always is available to you down below. Highest level overview of these two lines that we're adding over here is we're adding two model predicates, right? So two quote unquote variables to this particular item stack. One is the pull. The other one is the pulling. The pull basically is just how much percentage we have pulled down the bow, right? And the pull and the pulling is just a zero or a one, whether or not we even started pulling the bow, right? So when we start right clicking with the bow in our hand, then this is going to turn into a true. And there you go. To use this, we're just going to call the register custom bow method. I'm going to say mod items dot and bow and that's it. Now the two, the pull and the pulling are added to the count and bow. And in theory, if you had like multiple bows, you literally just would call it again. And there we go. Now, is that the case though? No, this is not quite the case because look at this items bow. We of course need to change this to the item parameter over here. That is very important that we do this. Otherwise, it's obviously not going to work. Doing it this way is now made it so that we can basically call this method however often we would like. And there we go. As we've seen in the last tutorial, the model predicate obviously uses models and the item models, basically. And we're going to add those manually ourselves as well. But first of all, let's add the translation to the bow over here. That's going to be quite interesting. And when I say quite interesting, it is super simple, obviously. So nothing too crazy going on. And then when it comes to the item model JSON files, well, we will actually copy those over as well as the textures. But I'm going to show you those. And those are also all available in the GitHub repository down below. That's got the four JSON files as well as the four textures over. Copy it over over here. There you go. And then we can take a look at the first JSON file. Now, as you can see with the Kaupenbo JSON file, it points to the Kaupenbo texture, which obviously is just the normal texture, right? So if nothing happens, if there's no pulling or no pull variable changed, then obviously we're going to have this normal texture and also a little bit of a different display. Basically, this changes as you can see, the rotation, the translation, the scale, both for the third person right and left hand and the first person right and left hand, just so that it looks a little bit different. However, once we start pulling, as you can see, then we start changing the model file, right? So it's going to change to this model file in particular, right? When we start pulling. And what you note here also is that the parent is pointing back to the count bow. This is needed so that the other textures are also going to have the difference in display. That is why this is important. Otherwise, like we had with the chisel used, we can literally just use the generated over here. That's fine. But in the bow case, we also want the display change. So that is why that is the case. 
And then as the pulling continues, you can see pull basically when it is 65% done, then we're switching to the next texture. So that would be to this one right here. And lastly, if we're completely done, basically 90% of the way done, then we have this texture and that is also where it's going to stay. That is pretty cool. And that is basically already going to work. However, when you use the bow, there is one more thing that happens. And that is that it changes the FOV when you pull the bow. And that happens in the uh, abstract client player entity. Let's include non-project items. There we go. That happens right here at the very bottom in the get FOV multiplier. And of course, it is once again hard coded that it only happens with the bow and not of instance of bow item because of course and for this we're actually sadly going to need a mixin in order to fix this situation luckily it's not too crazy but we will be copying over that mixin let's just uh, create that and i'm going to we're going to go through and then we'll see in the mixin package we're going to right click new java class called the abstract client player entity mixin in this case and I'm going to copy over the entirety of the class as always available to you down below. Do note over here that we are using this from with help from Medieval Weapons over here from Globox 1997 under the MIT license. So we are basically good to go. Let's import the mod items class here as well. And you can see basically overall, this is doing exactly the same thing as this is doing. We can even see that the names here are almost the same. So basically that is all we're doing here with this done well basically we we got this already done we now just need to make sure that the mixin is properly registered right obviously when we add a mixin then we need to have this so we're going to take the abstract client player entity mixin over here we're going to copy the name and we're going to go down to the tutorial mod .mixin JSON, and this is now to be added over here in a new client list very important and there we go, because this is abstract client player entity mix. And obviously this is for the for a client class. That is why it needs to go to the client and not in the, the mixin list. Very important. And there we go. That is the mixin added as well. And like I said, the mixin here is needed so that the FOV changes as we're, well, basically shooting the bow. You're going to see this in a second. But with this, we basically have everything that we need. We've added the model predicate. We've added the item and we have added all of the JSON files and everything, including also the abstract client player mixing over here so let's jump in the game and see if it works all right friends back in minecraft and first of all you can see the bow has been successfully added and i want to remind you how the normal bow looks like and you can see that we're having a slight zoom in effect when we well basically pull down the bow and that is a really cool thing but basically this is now also going to be the case for the custom bow because we added the fov you know, abstract mixing over there. That is why this also works. And you can see that the texture changes too. So that all works as well. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is a custom bow added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code is linked down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we will talk a little bit about events. Hope to see you there. So yeah.